Hi, I'm Perry Greenwood. I'm a product manager here at Backbox. My name is Josh Stevens, and I'm the CTO here at Backbox. All right, and we're here today to talk to you about automated uh, firewall and network device upgrades, OS upgrades using Backbox. And uh, we have a total of one slide for this section. You're seeing it right now. So with that, we'll jump right into the actual product. So just starting with uh, you know, Backbox as a whole, it's a network automation platform. Uh, we try to keep things fairly simple. Uh, Multi-vendor, 180 uh, different vendors that we support. But jumping into the specifics of uh, task automation or OS upgrades. So while we're talking about OS upgrades, of course, you can do that within Backbox. And we have a, a 47 different OS upgrade automations built into the platform. We also have the ability for you to do anything you can do between the keyboard and the device in that same set, same set of functionality. Um, so let's just focus back on upgrades. Uh, sorry, and you said 47 upgrades, you mean 47 different vendors or different platforms of couple of 47 upgrades? different um, platforms, vendors, uh, across all of it. Now, just because it's not added today, right, doesn't mean it can't be added very quickly uh, over the next, you know, couple days, hours, whatever, right? Um, between professional services teams and, you know, your teams who are network administrators, if they know how to do CLI and a little bit of Linux, they're able to use Backbox in order to create their own tasks and upgrades. We'll talk about that during the programmability uh, section. Sure. Thanks. Okay, so if, if my box isn't on the list of 47 out of the gate, I have the ability to go through and do it. You do, Big or you have the ability to call and we'll do it for you. Well, for yeah, me. so let's... Uh, yeah, for the professional... No, for free. Oh. You, know, you know, the only time we charge professional services is when it's a significant extended product enhancement that's unique to that scenario. Okay. It's very yeah. seldom that we do that. I, I report to the guy with the budget that it, it, professional services is like that big red flag. Yeah, yeah we don't really do that. Zeros to my budget. No, no. <laughs> no, and one of the things that we do that's pretty different is we provide the network automation team as a service as part of our offering. So we're not expecting our customers to have their own automation teams of Python expert to write those. We do that in house. So if a customer calls us and says, "Hey, you know, you have an automation similar to what I want, but I need to do these other three or four things," and explains it, we do it for them free of charge. It's just part of our our subscription. Okay, yeah. but it, it is in Python, so our Python team could just go in and do it too. Uh, it, it's not in Python, and let me just show you what it looks like right now. Okay. Um, we'll jump into this further uh, later, but sure. Let's do a quick uh, viewpoint of what it is because I, I mentioned it right. So what you have is you have a couple variables that you define. And here you see we have a server IP that this SCP file is going to be coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important for an SCP upgrade. You have to have a source and destination. Right. Um, and you could have something like an agent uh, out at a site. And this SCP might be coming from that agent rather than the core server. So that's why that's there. Uh, Sorry, let's take a step back. So this UI, is it a SaaS service or is it an on-prem hosted solution? So it's on-prem. It can be hosted in uh, AWS, GCP, Azure. And uh, for uh, certain accounts, we will do a managed service. So it's available on-prem, cloud, and SaaS. Okay. And then you can run TFTP server on it as well? Yeah, you can run TFTP or server. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so we have a couple variables that we define. These are you know iOS Ben files, the other one here, right? And then you look at these task commands, and this is what you're getting to, right? Is it Python? No, it's simple Linux plus some CLI, right? Okay. This is things that your team can grab and understand today, even if they don't have that deep Python expertise. They don't have the uh, you know uh, more uh, programmability focused. Uh, capabilities yet. So, um, you know, while we can uh, use our API for all of that, um, we also have the capability right here, very simple commands. So, uh, you know, when you're doing an OS upgrade, what we hear constantly from customers is my time to do OS upgrades is two in the morning, three in the morning. Yeah. You know, take your pick of time that you don't want to be awake. So with our product, 
That was the first thing we thought of, right? Scheduling. Can I add a schedule to this in order to do it at a time that I want to be asleep? You can see the scheduling. It isn't, you can run it once, you know, pick your time. Uh, you can run it weekly. You can run it daily. You can run it monthly, whatever. You can choose how often you want to repeat this process because, again, this isn't just designed for OS upgrades. It could be something like, hey, you know, at night, I need to add, or at 5 p.m., I need to add a VRF um, for a particular team. And then I want to kill that VRF at, you know, 6 a.m. Uh, whatever it is, uh, you can do that. So beyond scheduling, the next big piece is I actually don't want to wake up if everything goes right. So you need some notifications. And our notification flow allows you to use syslog, HTTP, email, um, using alerts within product. But imagine, hey, I want an HTTP alert to my Slack, my Twilio, you know, whatever, if things fail. If not, just shoot me an email in the morning. I really, really don't want to wake up for this. So if it's successful, shoot me an email. If it fails, wake me up. Now, you know, those 2 a.m. upgrades, not quite as bad. 95% of the time, 98% of the time, you get to sleep through it. You know, you just get the email saying, hey, this worked. I'm super curious. So I, I used to work at the NOC at basically a, a cloud provider. How have you seen like MSPs and such integrate this into their change management processes? Because I remember we used to have like the most finicky like devices that when we try and upgrade, we need to drain all the traffic like very slowly from all the links. Like we can't just sort of, I, I, I would be very afraid in that circumstance, like to just push a button and then go to sleep, you know? So I'm curious how you've seen customers integrate this into their change management processes like that. Yeah. So for finicky devices, as you saw, those commands are, are entirely um, capable of being uh, adjusted. So if you have a particularly finicky device, you know, that's how I, I would deal with it is say, okay, we're going to deal with it via those commands. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you mentioned, um, you know, switching devices over and HA management, et cetera. Uh, we do manage clusters in HA within Backbox. So our uh, OS upgrades, when you're talking about more complex devices, and I'm really glad you brought this up, um, it's not just, hey, I'm going to push the file out. It's, hey, number one, I'm going to figure out what's primary and secondary on this. Uh, number two, I'm going to make sure that I have room to send this file over. I'm going to uh, send it over at a time that is not in my maintenance window, ideally, right? And then I'm going to do the upgrade during that maintenance window, upgrade the secondary, right? Do pre-checks before that. Hey, what does my routing table look like before? What does it look like? You know, after I've done the upgrade, am I good to switch from primary over to secondary? And that's where those... Add that granularity in there with the yes. commands, like, okay, check the routing table. And if things look like exactly yes. what I specify, then I'm happy and we can... We, we do that, yes. Awesome, okay. Yep. I was going to ask on the change management front, if there are any integrations with ticketing systems. Um, we So bef before you execute that schedule change at three in the morning, you know, you want a ticket open because that's... That's yep. quite often the way the knock knows what's happening on the network, right? So, yes, we, we do, in fact, uh, integrate. We have a, a documented integration with ServiceNow. Um, other ticketing systems uh, we can integrate with as well. Uh, it's the same process, just a different um, uh, set of uh, calls or API commands, basically. And we can integrate downstream of ServiceNow. So ServiceNow instructing us to take action or the opposite direction. We right. can integrate where we're pushing data to ServiceNow. Hey, we're starting an upgrade. You know, hey, the upgrade's in process. Hey, the upgrade's over. Traffic's been restored, et cetera. Exactly. Uh, so that those teams know that that change is, is underway. There, Great question, John. Web pushes, or do you play on the Kafka bus or some other? U usually web pushes. Okay. Okay. No, that, that's cool. I couldn't see. I was looking around the interface and seeing, was this anywhere that obviously looks like integration? But so cool. Thank you for the answer. John, we're going to cover that in the in the programmability section as well. And yeah. with with the upgrades too, we always push out 
things as a separate task, sometimes days before. I mean, you can break these up, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At different times. And it, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Like, you want to push that file when it's not during your change window, right? So the the checking that you have enough disk space for it and doing that. Or with, a like, a checkpoint device, there's actual multiple steps where you have to update the, the CPUs in day zero, then push out the, the big file, and then, you know, update that. That's all uh, broken up. Yeah, and and we can call out for pre and post checks. That's right. I yep. just want to. Yeah, so uh, we we actually have a set of built-in pre and post checks on our OS upgrades. Um, they're going to differ by device. For example, right. like if you're updating a Cisco switch, you know it's not exactly the most comprehensive pre and post checks you have to do, <laughs> right? Um, but if you're up updating your firewalls, your Palo Altos, your checkpoints, um, that's a much more robust set of pre and post checks. And if we have um... You know, we have some vendor tools that do pre and, and post checks that are run out of Python scripts. I, I assume I could launch a, an external Python script you can. and read back results sure that, can. that yeah. come from that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No reason to walk away from any work you've already done in Python. You can leverage all that within the platform. So you, you can leverage the, the Python yeah. script. Um, the Yes. So you, you would basically uh, put that into like a file or a variable that we would then go and read into our script. Uh, within Backbox, so. Uh, um, how do you deal with a scenario where the new code uh, deprecated a couple of commands uh, that were configured on the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> never. <laughs> Can, really. We, we, so, yeah, we, we're, we're as at the mercy of the vendors <laughs> as you guys are in that, in that case. That is a wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, I thought you wanted the honest answer. <laughs> no, but would that show up in any configuration rift or diff scenario? It, it would. Would it you would. flag it yeah. to the admins that this so, has happened? That's right. Oh, man. I, I don't want to deviate too much here, but let me... Deviate. Try. These guys want to see the product. That's what we're here for. It's all right. All right, let's see. Let's see if we got something. I, let me take a look and see if we got By something. By the way, I did have one more slide that you didn't show. Oh, gosh. All right, uh, so we have a size mismatch here, so let's go ahead and use this one. Um, let's go to the, the history, and let's say you have, um, I don't know, these two. So you can actually look at the history of your backups and just do a quick compare. These backups are all automated, automated restore as well. Uh, within the product, but uh, actually it looks like these are all equal. It was uh, comparing to a baseline, which is not on that list. But to answer your question, yes. yes. So if those but, commands have been deprecated, you'll see that in the diff, and then you can choose how you want to deal with it after that. Absolutely. You may want to enter Roll some back. other commands or some other way of accomplishing a similar feature. Right, and so just really quick, you hit this compare, you get to see added, removed, changed lines, uh, excluded lines, et cetera. Uh, and you can get that report every time you do a backup. You can automate that report to come to you with a set of diffs. Yeah, that's one of the things we do it during upgrades too. Is uh, there's a there's a Git copy of the backup before. There's a another one snapped yep. after, and the Git compare tells you whether or not any of those wonderful messages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And whether you need to roll back in some senses. You know, if that was something you needed, you may have to roll back. Um, I think the last thing I want to mention about up upgrades is there's really two scenarios for upgrades, right? Either you want to access a new set of features or you're dealing with network uh, and security hygiene or um, closing off vulnerabilities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we definitely have a view that uh, there needs to be a tight integration on the vulnerability side. We have something coming in a few weeks that we're going to be announcing around that. Do you have an internal mechanism for going directly at device APIs, which we do. is usually a little more stable? Yeah, we, we, are, we are able to go directly to the API or the CLI of the device. Uh, the reason we're showing CLIs is that a lot of network engineers are CLI experts. Um, <laughs> and APIs, uh, at times, people are a little bit light on the APIs right now. Understood. Uh, Thank you. Does that include NetConf? No. Oh, what, what do you mean? Well, the API access, I mean, you yeah. know. NetConf is a typical alternative to CLI for those that don't actually run a web server and a you know, REST API. Uh, okay, I, I'm trying to understand the, the question. Could you? I'm trying to understand if you support it. You, you said you support API. Can you make a yeah. NetConf request to the device? Yeah, yeah. We, we could do uh, a, yeah. 
So basically, we would do a, let, let me be clear, we do a web request to the device, so wget curl, that sort of thing. That would be the way we do utilize APIs. All right, so not net comp. Not, not net comp. Yeah. But you could script net conf if you needed to. If you needed, yeah, if, if you needed to, I could see exactly how you could do it within the product. Jody, when you say you could script that, well, you mean you Backbox or you, me, the engineer? Well, either, but Backbox yeah. did offer. We right. Did. We we have the we have the professional services or you the engineer. Um, it, it's it's your choice which way you go with that. I do want to uh, start uh, kind of closing up the the conversation on OS updates and this task automation. On the upgrades and the notifications, is there also a horizontal integration with monitoring systems? Because it's nice that I can go to sleep, but if my monitoring so, uh, solution is going to ping me every minute because of downtime, because of the nightly upgrade, I'm still being awake. Ah, great question, Peter. But yes, we do integrate with management and monitoring systems for that. So if we could, we could, as part of the upgrade process, put that device into a change status so that they know or an unmanaged status and then put it back. Great question. So I think we covered the integrated backups and restores. Multi-step upgrades, HA aware upgrades, leveraging uh, vulnerability and risk uh, intelligence data. Like we said, we have something coming uh, there as far as an announcement in the next few weeks. If you're doing multiple devices in a night um, and you want to continue unless something fails, you have that kind of logic built in there too. Oh man, we, we do. Uh, oh, I. We'll, we'll do it. But a, a, you wait. have dependencies like this yeah. group of devices, if anything fails, stop at this group, keep going, right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not only that, but you can chain these together, which is. I think, yeah, don't do these two at the same time because, well, hell will break loose. They're finicky. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, like you said. So if you go to this mode tab within our jobs, and I didn't show this off before, but here you have a task one task chain to another, where we have a, we do an upgrade, and then if that upgrade is successful, we do you know, a message of the day update on the device. Um, you, know, you can pick your you know, post-upgrade flow, um, but it's not just, hey, I'm going to do an upgrade. It could be upgrade and then you know, whatever you want to change after that upgrade.